you will speak of the full twist category. All right, thank you so much. So first of all, I'd like to speak, uh, thank the organizers for this great conference. I think it's very nice and I learned a lot in Vienna's beautiful city. So I'll speak about full twist and I'll try to make it as easy as possible. So the idea is very basic. So we have the Bray group. And in the Bray group, I have the full twist, which is the nth power of this braid. And I can consider the cyclic subgroup generated by F. Uh, so this is a cyclic subgroup. Uh, and then it's well known that uh, in the braid group, this element is central. Uh, and this subgroup is the center for n bigger than 2, so for n greater than 3, the C is the center on the break group. All right. So that's quite important. And so the goal for today is categorifying this. Meaning that the braid group is replaced by some monoidal category, namely the homotopy category of the bimodules, which I will define and then the full twist would correspond to some uh, complex of circuit bimodules. See in some examples, then the powers of the full twist will be some other complexes. Because this is a tensor category, we can take powers. And then the question, the main question for today will be computing the form between f to the k and f to the l for all possible pairs of k and l. And so because this is invertible, we can actually say that this is form from identity to f to the power l minus k. And so really we want to compute this for all k and l, but we want to compute this for just the difference of k minus l. And so we will compute this. And as many people know, this is related to forms like Ivan Frazanski homology, and I will repeat how. So this is an example of computation of this. And then maybe in the end, I'll explain slightly more general picture. All right, so sorry by moments. So we have R. So I feel really awkward to be the first person and the only person in this conference defining sorry by module, and I'm certainly the last person suited to do so, but why not? So sorry by moments. So we have R is the polynomial ring over uh, n variables. I would work over C because it's easier. And then we can define B I to be polynomials modal relations that Xi plus Xi plus one is Xi prime plus Xi plus one prime. Xi, Xi plus 1 is Xi prime, Xi plus n prime. And Xj is equal to Xj prime or I j not equal to I and I plus 1. Or you can say that this is the same as R tensor R or R I and I plus 1. So this is an R R bimodial. Uh, and so as the man in the smallest full subcategory of our bimodules, containing bi and closed 
under change of product, direct sum, and direct sum. Okay. And I guess I have to say great shift. So in practice, what happens is that we start from BI, we take tensor products of BI, this would give what's called both Simonson bimodules, and then we take all possible direct amounts in those, and these are in the composable Zorky bimodules. And so this category is not abelian, but this is additive, and we can form homotopy category. So KB of SB is the bounded homotopy category. And then for what we'll need, we'll need some complexes of homotopy categories, complexes up to homotopy. Uh, and then we'll need two complexes, Ti, which is Bi, or by some map, which is not so important, and Ti inverse, which is R, to Bi. So there is a unique map here, and there is a unique map here, and a very important theorem of Rokia uh, says that Ti and Ti inverse satisfy braid relations. Up to homotopy. And this could be more precise up to canonical homotopy and so on. So in particular, Ti tensor Ti inverse is homotopy equivalent to R. Just so if we tensor these two two term complexes, we'll get a four term complex, but it's actually homotopy equivalent to just single term complex with them. And so as a corollary, we can for every braid beta, we can define a complex. Let's call it two beta. So this is a complex of Zorgis bimodules. Uh, and it's well defined up to homotopy. Well defined in this category, KB. So, for example, and this will be our example. So, if we have two strands, and we have the full twist on two strands, is just this braid. Which is the square of this generator. So, this generator, maybe I should say that this corresponds to this crossing and this corresponds to this crossing. And so I just see that the corresponding complex is T1 tensor T1. So this is the same thing as uh, B goes to R tensor B goes to R. And then one can check that this is the same thing as actually B Okay, let's do it in two steps. So this is B square goes to B plus B goes to R. That's what you get if you just tensor these two complexes. But then one can check that this is the same thing as just B goes to B goes to R. So this is a pretty explicit uh, complex of Zorger bimodules, and we can compute all differentials. And then the same way, so similarly, F to the power k, at least for k positive, uh, is the complex where you have b goes to b goes to b goes to b goes to r, and there are two k on this b. Okay, and if we have more strands, of course, it's more complicated, and it's really hard to write this complex explicitly, but it exists. Yeah. 
And then for Kavana for the Anski homology, we just say that we start from a braid beta, we form this complex T of beta, then we get home from identity, which is the same from R. Beta. So T of beta is a complex, and I take home from R to each term in this complex, so this will be again a complex. And important technical point is this is a complex of three R modules. So if we take home from R to any Zorgel by module, it's actually free R module. And then we take homology. So then we take homology home from R to beta. So this is precisely Kavana Perzanski homology of beta bar. And if I have to be precise, this is A is equal to zero part of it. And I don't need higher A degrees. And so the claim is theorem of Kavana. Is that this is a topological invariant. Of the closure. Beta, that is, it's an invariant under Markov box. And so we had this problem of computing forms between different f to the k and f to the l. As I said, you can rephrase it as form from identity, and identity is really just r here. And so if we can think of it as the problem of computing home. We can think of it as a problem of computing kavana frazanski homology of the power of full twist. Uh, and in any way, uh, I think it's an interesting problem how to compute this directly. And one remark before computing. Uh, so this is a complex of R modules. So what we get in the end is also an R module. And in general, it's not canonical in our module, but in this case it is because we have a link with n components, and on each component we have a variable, and so it is really in our module in canonical way. And so as a result, so this form from one to let's say f to the k is a bi-graded. R module. So this is one remark, and then we have compositions of homes or tensor product of homes. It's all the same. So we have a composition which goes from home from one to f to the k tensor home from one f to the a, whatever l again, uh, and then we have this composition which goes to home from identity to f to the k plus l. And so if we want to really understand that problem, we need to understand this not only as a bi-graded vector space, as usually what people do in kavano frazanski homology, you really need to understand this R module structure and this composition to get the structure of the space. OK, now to the hard part of the talk.
Yes, 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 yes. So I mean, if you want to be very precise, we need to work with complexes of graded R modules and we'll do this. And somehow, we not only with take homology, but we really need to look in complexes. But somehow, it's easier to compute homology. And then the complex, basically, we can reconstruct as some kind of free resolution for homology, which is not exactly right, but almost right. Okay, so the answer, so first for k bigger than zero. So let's actually do this example, okay? So we have n is equal to two. Uh, and again, my f was b to b to r. And then we can check that home from r to b is just r. And so home from identity to f is the complex where you have r to r to r. And in this case, we can write differential explicitly. So this is 0, and this is x1 minus x2. So recall that r is polynomials in two variables. And this is the complex that we get. And again, I mean, it's much more precise to look at the complex as opposed to homology. But we can certainly take homology. And that is r, direct sum is r mod x1 minus x2. And the same way we can compute form from identity to the f to the k. And this will be complex we have now r to r to r to r to r. So now this maps alternate between 0, x1 minus x2, 0, x1 minus x2. And so the homology will have one copy of r here. And direct sum, we'll just say k copies r mod x1 minus x2. And they all live in different gradients. We can say in which gradient, but let's not do it right now. OK, and that's the only case where I can compute anything by hand. But we can compute it in general. So the theorem number one in the joint work with my Hagen count is that for k greater than or equal to 0. Uh, home, again, let's put, to be precise, homology of the home from identity to f to the k is j to the k mod y j to the k, where uh, j inside polynomials in x1 to x n y1 to yn is the ideal generated by antisymmetric polynomials. So what happens is that we start from polynomial ring and variables x1 through xn and y, y through yn. So y's are somehow auxiliary and they didn't appear before. We have an action of Sn on the space, which permutes x's and y's simultaneously. And then we look at the subspace of antisymmetric polynomial and generate ideal by this uh, subspace. So we get something. It's some ideal in polynomial ring in x's and y's. Then we take k's powers of this ideal, and then we kill y's. And so this is very unnatural thing to do, if you see it for the first time, that to describe in R modules, as I said, homology is a module over R, so it's a module over polynomials in X variables. But the easiest way to describe this module is actually to introduce Y variables, describe this thing with Y variables, and then kill Y variables completely. And I will explain how these Y variables appear a little bit, uh, but this is that. And this is uh, compatible with all the structures we had before. So this is uh, compatible 
with the R module structure uh, and multiplication or composition, let's see. And this is also bigraded, so I didn't say, but Ys have homological degree two and some Q degree, which we can also reconstruct. So note that Yi have homological degree two. So it's n x on Ys. It's n x both on x's and on Ys simultaneously. So this is the answer, and somehow that's the best we can hope for. So before going to some details, let me actually check that we reproduce this answer, just in case. So for example, again, if n is equal to two, what is this j? So we're looking at polynomials in x1, x2, y1, and y2, and we have an action of s2 on it, which permutes these two guys and these two guys. And it's not so hard to check that this j is just the ideal generated by x1 minus x2 and y1 minus y2. So this is clearly anti-symmetric, and then the claim is any anti-symmetric function is actually a combination of these two. Fine. So we can think of this ideal as generated by two elements, alpha and beta, and then alpha times y1 minus y2 is beta times x1 minus x2. And so if I quotient by maximal ideal in y's, Uh, I get the same two generators, alpha and beta, but now the relation is just that beta times x1 minus x2 is equal to zero, because this is zero. And so this is precisely r plus r mod x1 minus x2. And this matches what we have over there. Uh, and that's it. And the same way, it's, let's not do this maybe, but for powers of this ideal, it's also easy to check that you reproduce that answer. Then you have one copy of R, and then you have torsion. Okay, so, 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 idea of proof. So the proof, has several ingredients, and the most important of them is that we have to see this wise somewhere. And so the first idea is that we deform kavano frazanski homology, so we call it yification. This is a deformation of Thompson homology. with y1, yn, and deformation parameters. Uh, and maybe, let me actually say how we deform in one sentence, uh, time for this. So ti deformed will be something like bi tensor polynomials in y, 
And then you have R tensor polynomials in Y. And then we have the old map, which was there. Let's go with B. And then you have the map backwards. Let's go with B star times Yi minus Y plus one. And then Ti inverse tilde is R tensor shield one. And then here the old map was B star. And then the new term will be B times Y minus Y plus one. So it's not so esoteric. It's we just add more terms to the differential. It actually breaks down uh, d squared is equal to zero, but once we close the braid, d squared is equal to zero again. So people in not homology might have seen this deformation by a different name. So this is similar to a butts and seed deformation. And uh Cowdis Kamenser. Deformations. So Bats and C did it for SL2 and Cowdis comes for SLN, but this is essentially the same construction. So this guy, what do you regard as living? I mean, it's not complex anymore. So D square is fixed. So this is a category of curved complexes with some fixed potential. So if you have a braid, maybe let me write this down. So if you have a braid beta, then we have D square is some like sum of yi xi minus xwy prime, where w is the corresponding permutation. And so we can look at complexes of things which are like free Zorgel by module times t, t of y as a uh, chain groups, and then uh, we require this condition on d square, essentially. So everything is free over y, and then d square satisfies this condition, and then if we compose things, we actually add this potential, which corresponds to multiplying permutation. So which is the homological degree? Y have homological degree two, and so differential, somehow this backwards differential, uh, it has degree minus one, but it multiplied by y, so it still has degree one. So you have to be a bit careful with degrees, but it's, it's great. <coughs> uh, right, and also if you were here last week, so Matt was giving lectures about these precise constructions. So also see Matt lectures last week. And since we are on this, so let me just give you one example of what happens. So if you have uh, the full twist on two strands again, so it was B to B to R, but now the form complex will look like this. You have B to B to R, and then you have some backward map. And this composition is actually non-zero in the land of complexes. It is something. But once we close the braid, so the trace or form from identity to F star is something like R to R to R. So this is our old map, which is zero. This is our old map, which is X1 minus X2. And this is the new backwards map, which is actually Y1 minus Y2. And so you can check that this is precisely the resolution uh, of the ideal J with Ys that we've seen before. Right, so this is the first step that we need to introduce this Y to the picture. And then the second step is hard, and I don't want to comment on that. But we prove that uh, this four, so this is defined for any braid and for any knot. And then four F to the K, for K bigger than zero, uh, this deformed homology. is free over Y. So this is the key step. And once we know that it's free, we can actually go ahead and prove that actually the deformed homology uh, 
uh, is just j to the k, where j is this ideal which appears before. And we secretly use some facts from algebra that people have proved about this j, but maybe I'll say this a bit later. And so because this is free, so I have a complex of free modules over C of y, and I know that the homology is free over C of y, so it doesn't matter if I first cancel y in the complex and then compute homology, or I first compute homology and then kill y. So this is the freeness thing. And so in particular, the undeformed homology is just the quotient by y. You don't need to do any special sequence. And so this is basically the idea of how this works. Again, like this is the most technical step and I would be very happy to talk about it, but maybe not right now. Okay, and so, 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 so. Right, so one remark which is kind of interesting here is that we have a symmetry between x's and y's, which was completely unknown to us. Remark, and this is symmetric. in x and y. And so in this construction, they played completely different roles. So x's were internal variables in Zorgelby modules and y's are formal deformation parameters. But in the end, the result is symmetric in x and y. And I think this deserves better explanation and might be related to some things. It's related to some symmetries of form like homology which people observed long time ago and still are conjectural. but. I mean, at least in this case, we would just see that this is true. It should be true for every braid in some sense. It's, it's conjecturally true for every braid. It's, it's conjecturally true for every braid. So it's no longer, so homology is certainly no longer free over y's, it's no longer free over x's and anything, but it's conjecturally true for every braid. There is a similar result if you have a knot, then you don't really have x's and y's acting on homology. I mean, you have but in trivial way, uh, but you have still magic symmetry of the homology, homology, which kind of exchanges Q to Q inverse. And that is, was conjectured by Jake long time ago and it's still conjectured. Anyway, right. So what about negative powers? So there is an easy thing for negative powers. So easy is a lemma, which is really not so hard to prove, is that home from identity to f inverse uh, is the same as home from f to identity. And this is just r. So there is unique, essentially, up to multiplication by x's or y's. Uh, map from the full twist to identity. And secretly we use it here because we say that uh, homology of f to the k is identified with some sub-module of c of x and y. And so we have this chain map, so we have this splitting map uh, psi, which goes from the full twist to identity and somehow so the splitting map somehow splits the components of this n and torus link. And if I apply to this, so, so splitting map on homology, 
this uh, psi from home from identity to r, f to home, let's say from one to f to one, is the map identifies uh, home from one to f with a submodule. And here, and here, this is just R. And I have to be careful, so this is really in this deformed setting. Let's see, whatever, F tilde. Tilde is everywhere, so this is polynomial and X is in Y. So you can ask why this is, uh, first of all, related to any submodules of X's and Y's. I mean, that's why. But if you don't understand this remark, I mean, that this is the statement. That you have a unique map from F to identity, and this really follows just from Markov mode, essentially. It's not hard to say. And now what about K, which is less than minus one? So this is another theorem that we proved as Hogan comes Mendes and Nakagana. Which says that F inverse is a serpenter. It's a serpenter uh, for this category. Namely, uh, if I take home from identity to X, this is the same thing as home from, let's say, x times f to identity dual uh, for any x. Uh, where this dual means, so this is not really, it is an R module, but if it's wrong to think about this as a dark module, we think about this as a complex of our module. And this is a dual complex of our module. So they're dual as complexes of free R modules. Uh, no, there is no shift. I mean, it depends how you fix the gradients, but I mean, in some choice of the gradients, there is no shift. Uh, and so this was known to some extent in slightly different setup. I don't know. I mean, it's certainly not, we were certainly not the first ones to do this. We did slightly different proof, I guess, but this was in different setup. So remark in a slightly different setup. Which is like Zorgli modules or category O. This was proved by Mazurchuk and Stroppel. And by uh, Davidson, Zerkovnikov and Mirkovich. So they were doing uh, category law essentially, and then you can go to Zorgel modules. But the point here is that for them, the serodoids was really over a field. And here, because everything is over R and because home is R module, you have to keep track of R module structure and slightly different. But also we feel that our proof is much easier because this category is monoidal. And for example, you don't need to I mean, do a lot of stuff that they do. So somehow the proof is really straightforward, not so. Anyway. It's different. Right, and so we can use this to compute these things for negative powers. So let me write it there.
consequence. We can take form from identity to f to the power minus k, call this x, then by that theorem, this is the same thing as form from f to the minus k tensor f to identity dual, which is the same thing as form from f to the power 1 minus k to identity dual, which is the same thing as form from 1 to f k minus 1 dual. And so roughly speaking, this is this j to the k minus 1 over y j to the k minus 1 dual. And again, we have to be really, really careful with what the duals mean. So we have to take basically free resolution of this thing over R and then dualize the free resolution and then take homology. And it's not just the dual, so this is dual in some kind of derived sense. So take free resolution. And do it. And then take a motion. Uh, and so this is more or less the answer. So we know what happens for positive powers, we know what happens for negative powers, and this is complete description of the category. There is a slight lie with composition because we need to be careful with composing positive and negative and negative and negative. But let's not do this. In any way, we can compute homology of all positive and negative powers of the full tree. And so now the last thing that I want to say is, so what? So, well, we can compute this homology. It's so very nice, but so what? So why might be useful? And this is a joint work which somehow precedes this by some reason. Jake and Andre Good. So we had a, basically, I mean, all this we conjectured previously and then we proved this much later. Uh, but the conjecture was aimed at the following thing. So now, how we can use it? So let's take beta to be arbitrary break. or any object in this orgyl category for what it means. So we can take the dark sum for k from zero to infinity of forms from identity to beta times f to the k. And this is a graded module. over the algebra, so let's call it A, which is the direct sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of just form from 1 to f to the k. By the same reason as before, because we have multiplication, so this is graded algebra, and so we have multiplication which goes from form 1 beta times f to the k to form 1 f to the l, and then it goes to form 1 beta f to the k plus k. So we certainly have, from abstract properties, we have this graded module structure over this graded algebra. And essentially what we did, what I explained in the first half of the talk, is how to compute this graded algebra. We just know it explicitly. And once we have a graded algebra and graded module, we can do some algebraic geometry.
So let's call this whatever, M beta. And so M beta is a module over A. And so M beta is again graded module over A. And it gives you a shift or a coherent shift on progeny. And so the corollary from what we did discuss before is that this progeny is Xn. So this is called the isospectral Hubert scheme. Defined by Heyman. And so, if you don't know what it is, let me just say that Xn is the blow up of C2 to the N along the union of all the atoms. So C2 to the N is the space of collections of n points on the plane, and we have all diagonals where these points collide. They have co-dimension two, uh, and then we blow up the union of all of them. And this is Xn. It's pretty bad singular space, but it is what it is. And so in particular, we have a functor which goes from here to here to here and up to lots and lots of technical things. It's more or less all the same. And so, uh, as a corollary, for a given braid, we can Yeah, if you, you have to work with deform. Otherwise you don't. If you don't work with deform, you take this, but then you take pre-image of the X. And so for a given braid, we construct a shift that's what you see, so remark. First, maybe a theorem to useful. So this is Elias and Hogan And maybe I should have said this before, that F is in the Greenfield center. Oh, KB of this. That is uh, x tends to f is isomorphic to f tends to x naturally in x. And so somehow we said that for every braid, every braid commutes with f. But if you have some complex build out of braids and build out of things, you have to check some things. And there is some homological algebra involved, but I mean, that's what they prove that this still can use contorally in that. And so we can apply it here. So we can say that this functor, the remark then, is that this functor, this assignment from beta to M beta, is trace light. So if I have form or form of trace light, how to say? Homes. So if I have form from identity to alpha times beta times f to the k, because f is central, I can say that this is form from identity to alpha times f to the k times beta. So this is the same thing as home from identity to beta and self identity to the k. And so this is it. And so this corresponds to somehow m alpha beta, and this corresponds to m beta alpha. 
And there is a slight lag here, but let's not go there. And so in particular, we have, so for people who study traces, this gives me a map from the trace of the Zorg category to uh, this category of modules over A or the category of sheaves approach of A. And so that's one thing. And another thing is that Uh, so we have a map. Is M No. I mean, it's a module over R, which is polynomials and N variables. So yeah, I mean, no. No, it shouldn't be. Maybe I don't want to talk about sheaves because, but what I want to say is that, so you have, again, the map which goes from beta to M beta, so this is the graded A module. Uh, and then I can restrict to <coughs> invariant parts. So I can restrict to graded uh, A and SAM module. That's a technical point, but somehow, I mean, in this conjugation, we have sometimes to correct by the action of ascent. We, when we conjugate a braid, we relabel the variables. And so we have to, so this isomorphism holds up to some permutation. But if we ignore this issue, that's fine. And so in particular, let's give a punter from the horizontal trace of KB of S beam. Maybe deformed, but whatever. Put dotted things to the category of graded A and SM modules. And again, it's probably derived. Uh, and so you can study uh, this map, and this is more or less the same. Again, let me be sloppy here. So this is the right category of coherent sheets on the Hubert. And so the expectation is that that's more almost equivalent. But maybe I don't want to write it in the book. But at least, I mean, this gives a lot of information about uh, the trace. So this is. One thing, and another thing is much more practical. Uh, so, another application. Categorical diagonalization. utilize Hogan Cup. So Elias and Hogan Cup, they studied the full twist, how it acts on the category of Zorgin band modules and what are the eigenvectors and eigenvalues in appropriate sense. And in particular, they prove that there exists maps, let's call them alpha lambda, from identity to F, parameterized by lambda Yan diagram. With 
and boxes <coughs> such that and an object P lambda, which is categorified transversal projector, uh, such that uh, alpha lambda tensor P lambda would go from P lambda to F tensor P lambda. And here we have some kind of grading shift. And here we have some kind of grading shift. So this is an is isomorphic. And somehow, uh, not only F times P lambda is a multiple of P lambda, there is a prescribed isomorphism which identifies them. And so this is a nice and beautiful theory, but one big question is, I mean, what is the meaning of this alpha lambda? How do we think about them? And our computation just give an answer to that because we know the whole home space from identity to F and then we can go back and look for alpha lambda inside that space. And so if we know that from identity we have is this j mod y j where j is again ideal generated by the symmetric we can say that alpha lambda in j is just anti-symmetrization of a monomial a certain monomial. And so it's, because it's a, the space of anti-symmetric polynomials, it's really easy to produce interesting elements there. You can just start from monomial, anti-symmetrize, and get an interesting element in G, and we can check that it survives in the quotient, and that gives the correct eigenmap here. And so in particular, it gives slightly better understanding of why this eigenmap exists, where they come from, and so on. Again, in terms of the Hubert scheme, they give some sections of some line bundle in the Hubert scheme which are visible and which was studied by Heyman a long time ago. And so this gives a different perspective on this categorical diagonalization. And so that we can also match it to the section of the line bundle. Uh, and I don't want to talk about this geometry maybe, but again, this very computation just tells us that we can find some interesting elements with some interesting properties that we need. And I'll stop here. Yeah, so the question is, so this causal duality should be related to swapping x's and y's, yes. So it's still an open question? No, I, I don't know any, yeah. I think it's, it's still a wide open question. But there should be, I mean, like categorically, there should be what the equivalence of the category with just swaps x's and y's, essentially. Yes. Yes, yes. Not in general, but I mean, this gives some recipe for, for some braids. Uh, this could be made explicit, like for Taurus knows there were a lot of computations by Matt and by Anton made it. Uh, but in general, I mean, it's, it's hard to say what's going on. But somehow this gives some description that 
somehow we add a full twist to arbitrary break and then you get this construction and then you can study everything from perspective of this module set. You can actually study it from here. So you can, in some sense, you take your braid expanding projectors. Each projector is multiplied by scalar if we apply the full twist. And then we recombine and we have that some giant complex built out of it. And then we have to take homology, but that's very, very inexplicit then. You should ask Matt Reed. I mean, I can't. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. We are expecting this to be an equivalence. From horizontal trace of SPM to yeah. Yeah. Trees yeah. And by BKR to like modules of the risk product. So this is also the same thing. To modules where you have C of X and Y smash ascent, modules, try skyscraper. So this is bridge and King and Bridge. And so, yeah, I mean, yeah. But somehow, I mean, the main subtlety here, which I'm sweeping under the rug, is like what is Wi Fi trace? So you have to deform not only the category, but the trace, and it's a subtle point. So if you don't have Ys, it would be some kind of uh, tablet scheme support around the axis. Yes, that's right. But somehow that's not the horizontal trace, because horizontal trace would just see somehow C of X mesh ascent as an annular homology. And so you have to somehow enhance this to see this Ys. And I don't know. It's a delicate question. But we're working on it. OK. It's like this is OK.